Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Grandstand Sports Data, your go-to channel for sports, stats, and unbiased handicapping. We have something really special in store for you. You've heard the debates and seen the comparisons, but have you ever wondered who truly deserves the title of the greatest quarterback of all time? Well, today we have an exciting twist as we put our cutting-edge AI technology to the test. That's right, we're letting ChatGPT, the incredibly powerful language model, dive into the world of football and make an unbiased selection. So buckle up and join us as ChatGPT dives into the numbers, the records, and the legacy to crown the ultimate quarterback legend. So first we're going to start with qualification. I asked ChatGPT who was the greatest quarterback of all time. And the answer we received was the question of who is the greatest quarterback of all time is a subject of much debate and personal opinion. There is no definitive answer as it largely depends on individual perspectives, biases, and criteria used for evaluation. However, there are a few players who are commonly mentioned in discussions about the greatest quarterback of all time. And here, are some, here is the list. Tom Brady, Joe Montana, Peyton Manning, Brett Farr, Johnny Unitas, Dan Marino, John Elway, Terry Bradshaw, Drew Brees, and Aaron Rodgers. And since ChatGPT only goes up to the year 2021, us ourselves at Grandstand Sports Data added Patrick Mahomes because he has won another Super Bowl, and it only makes sense to see where he stacks up with the list. So since there was no clear answer and they gave me just this group of players, I asked ChatGPT next, can you give me at least a criteria or a rubric to find out who the GOAT quarterback is? And this is the criteria that they gave me. So number one would be Super Bowl victories. Winning the Super Bowl is the ultimate achievement in the NFL and should carry the most substantial weight, says ChatGPT, and weighted it at 30%. Next would be Super Bowl MVPs. Winning the Super Bowl MVP award signifies delivering an outstanding performance in the most important game and should be weighted 25%. Next would be regular season MVPs. Winning the league MVP award demonstrates exceptional individual performance and leadership during the regular season and will carry a weight of 15%. Next would be all pros. All pro selections represent being recognized as the best quarterback in the league for that specific season and should carry a weight of the same 15% as MVPs. Next would be statistics. The specific statistics chosen are best for comparing quarterbacks across all generation, generations. Using statistics like passing touchdowns or passing yards would be beneficial to the quarterbacks of the modern day game, but wouldn't do justice to the older generation. So using these four statistical categories passes the test over time and makes the quarterbacks easier to compare. And finally, we use Pro Bowls. More Pro Bowl selections indicate consistent recognition as one of the top quarterbacks in the league, and it carries the same weight as the combined statistics category. Because just like statistics, Pro Bowls do not tell the whole story, hence why Tyler Huntley and Derek Carr were an actual AFC Pro Bowler this season. I think we can agree that those are not the top two of the top three AFC quarterbacks in the league. So let's move on to our honorable mentions. Our honorable mentions, number 11 will be Dan Marino. So like we said, we weighted all the statistics and it would spit out a number and the number would be 1.15. The 1.15 signifies Super Bowl wins, the MVPs, all those weighted just like we showed you in the previous slide. Drew Brees would come in at number 10 at a 1.58. John Elway at number nine at 1.68. We would have Brett Farr at number 8 with 1.98, and then Johnny Unitas with a 2.27. Terry Bradshaw comes in at 2.47, which would leave him 6th all-time on the list. In our personal opinion, that's a little bit high, especially... We would also like to mention, though, before we move on to Terry Bradshaw and him being a little bit high, I think that Johnny Unitas is a little bit high as well because we factored in all championships not just Super Bowls for him. So if we just did only Super Bowls, he would probably scoot further down the list. So let's get into our top five. And number five is Patrick Mahomes. 
Patrick Mahomes, he's a two-time Super Bowl winner, winning it in 2019 and in 2022. He's a two-time Super Bowl MVP, winning that in 2019 and also in 2022. He's a two-time MVP in the regular season, both in 2018 and just this past season in 2022. And he's a two-time All-Pro as well in 2018 and in 2022. His playoff win percentage is a 78.6, which is absolutely phenomenal. And his playoff passer rating is a 107.4. His regular season win percentage is 80%, and his regular season passer rating is a 105.7, which if you look at his playoff passer rating compared to his regular season passer rating, he actually outperforms himself in the playoff, which I know some people will say, well, he raises his game. Not, not necessarily. Most quarterbacks, their passer rating goes down because you're facing elite defenses or better defenses, I guess I would call it. He's also made it to five Pro Bowls. This puts him at a total of a 2.50, leaving him fifth of all time. Now, just remember, he's very young still, and he has a lot more years in his career to go. So he's going to move up this list as time goes on. That's my that's my guesstimation, and I mean, it, it definitely can't be a wrong one. Um, when you have this much time on your side, I mean... Worst come to worst, I think he would probably get, what, one more Super Bowl if worst comes to worst? But his upside is so huge right now, and his his future looks so bright that really the sky is the limit. He He's looking almost like borderline Brady-like when Brady was younger. So Brady didn't have the talent or the skill, but I'm, ter- I'm just talking in terms of production. I mean, Brady had, what was it, three Super Bowls in his first four years as a starter— Mahomes has got two already. I mean, he's they're almost neck and neck in terms of projections. Patrick Mahomes, if he can keep, you know, that hunger, crazy things could happen. Coming in at number four is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, he's a one-time Super Bowl winner back in 2010. He's a one-time Super Bowl MVP in that same year. He has four MVPs in the regular season in 2011, 2014, 2020, and also in 2021. He also has four All-Pros, which happen to be in the same seasons as his MVPs. His playoff win percentage is a 52.4%. His passer rating in the playoffs is 100.1. His regular season win percentage is 65.9, while his regular season passer rating is 103.6. So just like we told you about Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes ups his game in the playoffs, whereas Aaron Rodgers, he falls a little bit lower when it comes to passer rating. Aaron Rodgers has been elected to 10 Pro Bowls. His total would be a 2.59, and this would leave him ranked fourth of all time. Now, I would say that this is a little bit high. Some of these statistics, um, I guess the MVPs is what is what does it for him, what takes him higher up on this list. Um, if you're just asking me personally, I think he would have had more success if he had better defenses in some of those years from 2010 all the way to more present day 2020. I think some of his defenses have really let him down in some of those playoff games. Um, other than that, uh, I would say more recently, it hasn't been the defense. It's been more of his play and more of his, I would say, commitment to his team. He hasn't really had that commitment to the Green Bay Packers in these last couple years. I'd say last two years that he should have had. I I think he's high. If you're asking me honestly, I think he's a little high on this list. I think that he should be top 10, but you're talking top five. That's a little high for a guy who's only won one Super Bowl. I'm sorry to say that. Coming in at number three, Joe Montana. Joe Montana is a four-time Super Bowl winner back in 1981, 1984, 88, and in 89. He was a Super Bowl MVP in 81, 84, and 89 as well. He's a two-time regular season MVP back in 1989 and 1990, so back-to-back years. And he's only made three All-Pros in 87, 89, and 1990. His playoff win percentage is a 69.6. His playoff passer rating is a 95.6, while his regular season win percentage is 71.3. Also, his regular season passer rating happens to be a 92.3. 
He's also made it to eight Pro Bowls. This would leave him at 3.48 and rank third of all time. And I would say this is maybe a personal favorite of mine just because of growing up. I watched a lot of Joe Montana, not so much of the 49ers Joe Montana. And that was towards, I was a little bit young for that, but more Kansas City Chiefs Joe Montana. And he he was outstanding. I, I just, I loved everything about his game. He was a great passer. He also got out of the pocket and ran and scrambled. He won the Super Bowl in his rookie season. I thought he was outstanding. The only thing that you can um, push back really on Joe Montana is there wasn't much of a salary salary cap back then, and the teams that he was on was loaded. They were all loaded. Um, offense, defense, special teams. Probably had one of the best coaches in the world at the time. He was just on a loaded football team, and that would probably be his biggest knock. Where some of the guys on the list, um, the remaining quarterbacks on the list kind of had GMs where they weren't as favorable for them and and maybe cost them some Super Bowls. But Joe Montana was put in a good position, but you can't knock him for executing as he did. Also, injuries kind of hampered him. He had an elbow problem. He had back injuries towards the end. It kind of took away from some of the success that he could have added, or I would say some of the things that he could have padded on, some of the accolades he could have padded on towards the end of his seat you know, end of his career, which really didn't happen. So coming in at number two, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, he's a two-time Super Bowl winner. He won the he won that championship back in 2006 and in 2015. He won the Super Bowl MVP in that 06 Super Bowl. As well, he was the MVP five times, winning it back-to-back in 03 and in 04. He won it again back-to-back in 08 and in 09. And he won it one last time in 2013. He's a seven-time All-Pro or first-team All-Pro, reaching that accolade in 03, 04, 05, 08, 09, 2012, and then finally in 2013. His playoff win percentage is a 51.9, and his playoff passer rating is an 87.4. His regular season win percentage is a 70.2, and his regular season passer rating is a 96.5. Peyton Manning has been a Pro Bowl of 14 seasons. This would total him to a 3.62 and rank him second of all time. The knock that I would have on Peyton Manning is those playoff win percentage and playoff passer rating numbers. He was almost one of the worst in terms of these 11 quarterbacks, the total of 11 quarterbacks that we analyzed here. His playoff performances were really not that great. Um, He had that one year in 06 when they had Bob Sanders healthy, the safety, and they actually had a defense to support him. Other than that, he's had years where he's had a crap load of weapons and could not finish. Back And if you remember the Super Bowl in 2015, the reason why it wasn't the MVP, he was literally handing off. He 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 wasn't doing much else. He could barely throw the football. He was basically washed by then. Um... I guess you could say that in the beginning half of his career, he he suffered to the Bill Belichick defenses in those playoffs, but he kind of cracked the code towards the end half of his, or I don't know how you would put it, like the middle half of his career, going towards the tail end of his Indianapolis Colts career, he cracked the New England Patriots code. Some people think, some people in New England think that New England was dominant against him. They were for those beginning years. Those, I want to say from 03 to about, I guess, 2010, but it, it wasn't, it after that, no. Manning cracked the code on the Pats. The thing about Peggy Manning is he was a great, he was the field general. He knew what everybody was going to do before they were even going to do it. He was an excellent quarterback in terms of that aspect. It's just that his playoff performance would really make me push him down the list. I think two's really high for a person who has had not much success in the playoffs. All these accolades, I would think the MVPs and the All-Pros really pushed him high on this list. But for those playoff numbers, they really jumped out at me and made me uneasy if I was to put him higher on, say, my own personal list. So ChatGPT and their criteria has him at number two. I don't agree with it. 
Coming in at number one, and probably no surprise here, Tom Brady. Tom Brady is a seven-time Super Bowl champion. He's won the he's won the Super Bowl in 2001, went back to back in 03 and 04, won it again in 2014, 2016, 2018, and 2020. He was the Super Bowl MVP in five out of those seven Super Bowls, winning that award in 2001, 2003, 2014, 2016, and again in 2020. He's a three-time NFL MVP, winning that in 2007, 2010, and in 2017, and a three-time All-Pro, getting that accolade or achieving that accolade in the same seasons as his regular season MVPs. His playoff win percentage is a 72.9. His playoff passer rating is 89.8. His regular season win percentage is 75.4. His regular season passer rating is 97.2. And he's been elected to the Pro Bowl 15 times. This would total him to a 5.41 rating and would rank him number one and the greatest of all time in terms of quarterbacks. Now, I do agree with this. I mean, it's kind of hard to argue with that, that Tom Brady is not the the greatest quarterback of all time. I will say that some of the criticism that he gets is that he's always had an elite defense in terms of... I would push back against argument in saying that he's always had an elite defense. He's not always had an elite defense. He's always had a great defense when he's won a championship. I, I, I believe in that. I think that that is true. Um, I think if you're on the other side of that argument, you would say that Tom Brady has never won with any great weapons. He never won with Randy Moss. He never won with Wes Welka. The only time he did win with weapons was in back in Tampa. But I think it was the general manager. I think it was Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick didn't give him any weapons. Um, some people will say, well, he didn't give him weapons because he he had to give money to some of the guys on defense. I guess I could see that argument. Um, I don't know why you couldn't do both because the NFL salary cap is a joke. So I, I don't know. I don't see why you couldn't give him a great wide receiver along with a good defense. Um, but the year that he did have those elite wide receivers, the guy put up monster years. He had Randy Moss in 2007. It was an electric year for Tom Brady. It was craziness. So. That's what I would say. I would say that if anything, Bill Belichick cost Tom Brady Super Bowls, where if he opened the the purse a little bit, he may have a few more, believe it or not, which I think is crazy, but he just is. Um, me personally, Brady should be number one. I think Montana should be higher on this list. Um, I'm a big fan of Montana. I always love Montana. I like Brady. I mean, I like Montana better than Brady, not in terms of a quarterback. I'm not stupid. Brady is better than Montana, but I just like Montana. But the likability factor, I like Montana better as a person, as just as just a dude. Like I just like him better than Tom Brady. But um, I'm not crazy. Brady is better than Montana. I've you know I given that argument up a long time ago. Um, so there you have it. So like always, we hope you found our ChatGPT selections of the greatest quarterback of all time entertaining. Our goal at Grandstand Sports Data is to provide you with stats that bring unbiased handicapping. So if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. It would be greatly appreciated. Your feedback is everything to us, so leave comments down below. I don't care if it's good, bad, or indifferent. Leave something down below and get people talking. Finally, thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you guys in the next one.